Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Let's get crafting. This free printable that I designed for all of you to be able to grab, it's linked down below in my description box. Don't forget to grab it. We're gonna be taking these printables and some scrapbook paper and some foam core and we're gonna turn them into something really special that is just farmhouse chic. Go ahead and cut out your printable right at that cut line and once you've got all three of them cut out and ready to go, you're going to then take your foam core board and trace them onto that. Here are what the printables look like once they are all cut out and ready to go. So now I'm going to just take that printable, flip it over so it's the backside facing up, and I'm going to just trace on four squares. Now you're going to see that I actually did five, but I decided to go back later on and trace the fifth square once the square was built. So you're going to see in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and cut them all out so that I have these four different pieces and again you're seeing me cut the fifth piece but I'm going to cut them all out and once everything has been exacto knifed I can start assembling my box. We're going to be creating three stacking tier boxes which I just think are the coolest thing ever and a really fun way to get a dramatic height when it comes to decor in your home. We're going to just start putting all of those pieces together I like to make sure that my pieces all interlock into each other. So I'm hoping this makes sense. On one of the pieces, you stick it on the side and then you move over to the other side and you put it on the inner part. That way, so all of the pieces are kind of folding into each other. I don't know if that makes sense. So you're gonna see it here where I put it on the side and on the top and then I'm kind of wedging them into each other that way so they're nice and secure. And then I'm going back in with some hot glue on the inside of the box and taking a popsicle stick and smushing it all around in there so it's really nice and sturdy. Now see here's where I'm deciding to go back and cut that fifth piece again. I'm gonna make sure I put the box down and then cut it because I noticed that there was a little bit of a shorted lip on the sides and I wanted to make sure that it was a full complete covered top. So once I've got that piece, I went ahead and glued it on and I was ready to start decorating this box. Now keep in mind I didn't put anything on the bottom because you want to be able to stack these away when the season is done or you can keep them out year round. So I decided to not put anything on the bottom of them so they store nicely and you don't have these big bulky things that you try to store in the future. Then you're going to take some Mod Podge and you're just going to put that right over your box and put on your printable, move around to the other side put on some scrapbook paper, just make sure everything is nice and snug on there. And then this is the quickest way I decided to do it was I cut it after I already put it on the box and then I just Mod Podge it. So now you're gonna see that I'm gonna move on to the next side. I'm gonna add some more of that wonderful glue that I love to use so much in a lot of my videos and then I'm going to add on the scrapbook paper and then I'm going to put it down on the cutting mat and cut it once it's already on there that way so I don't have any wonky cuts and it's perfectly cut to the box. These papers were all from Hobby Lobby and they were on sale. You can get really great deals for scrapbook papers there and they have some really pretty farmhouse papers. Once you've got those papers all on, everything is Mod Podge and sealed, you're gonna take some black and white paint and create kind of like an ombre effect. You don't want it to be super black or super gray or super white. You want it to look old and distressed and weathered. So I'm just kind of going in and just mixing on some paint and then I'm gonna take a paintbrush and add on some little streaks here and there with the brown and dry brush on some brown in the middle and just keep playing with it until it looks weathered and distressed. I think that this looks super, super beautiful on a bookshelf somewhere or maybe a side table. I just think these look so cute and they give you that really big height and especially when you pair them next to some florals and some other greenery, it looks so pretty. So again, just keep playing with your paint. Have fun with it. This is something that I don't think that is easy to mess up. And you just keep blotting away what you don't like and keep adding more what you do. So now here I'm gonna show you where they can all stack inside of each other with the three different sizes that we're gonna be making today. The template works from the printable. Just trace that out for each of your boxes and you're good to go.
Today's video theme is best 20 DIYs in 2020. I am co-hosting this challenge with my friend Lynette over at DIY Beauty on Purpose. She and I together have put together a playlist and a ton of other YouTubers that you probably love just as much as I do who are going to be doing their countdown of their 20 best DIYs. Head on down to the playlist and check it out and see what they're doing for their countdown. And if you're new here to my channel, welcome. My name is Heidi Sambel. This is my DIY channel. I love of crafting. I hope you feel inspired to stick around and click that subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I post on Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here on my channel. For our next project, we're going to take these beautiful stickers from the Dollar Tree and a charger that I spray painted white. Now, I have not seen anybody use these succulent stickers yet. And I was so excited when I realized that this was a giant heart and I knew right away that I wanted to try to do something like this for you all. So take your heart and it gets a little tricky around that beveled edge. You're going to push it down in there and just slowly massage it into place and it should lay flat. Now you could stop there, which is beautiful to display in your home, or you could take it a step further, which is what I'm going to do. I'm taking some white and cream paint and just kind of, you know, distressing it a little bit right in the middle because I'm going to do something really cool for our home to personalize this plate. And this could be such a pretty gift to give somebody if you're looking again for a unique gift. You're then going to take the large letter stickers that they have there. Now we happen to have a long name, so I wanted you all to see that you can do a long name with a lot of letters. And you're just going to go right on to that white paint once it's dry. Then you're going to take the smaller stickers and you're going to spell out the and family. So I just think this would be so pretty at an entryway into someone's home to be able to display their family's name. And I love the shape of the heart with the succulents. I just think it is so perfect for Valentine's Day and spring leading into it. You can leave this up for quite some time in your front entryway and really get a home decor item that has a long lifetime. Versus, I know some people struggle because Valentine's Day is such a quick holiday and it's coming right off of Christmas. But this one, like I said, it can go into spring which would be really pretty almost even into summertime actually because I think of succulents around summertime as well. So once it's all done and the stickers are in place use some Mod Podge to seal it all. If you didn't know, I'm over on Instagram and I would love for you to come on over and say hi to me. Let me know what you're doing in your craft room. If you have any DIYs that you've tried here on my channel, it's the greatest way to be able to tag me in them so I can see them and share in the excitement of you trying them. I'm so grateful for everyone who has already come over to say hi to me and I look forward to all the new friends who do come over. I found this horse as inspiration online a while ago and so I found this thrifted horse. It used to be a toy, it was in the toy section and I knew right away that I could turn this into a really cool statued horse. I've been wanting one of these for a long time and I just thought they would be so cool and I definitely was not going to pay that thousand dollars. So I started by lessening the amount of hair that the horse had on it by cutting it in half and then I gave it a haircut and pulled out all of that extra hair that was in there that I did not want because we want to lessen the amount. That way when you go to mold it and shape it, you're not going to struggle with there being so much of it. And you could leave it long if your horse you find at your thrift stores has long horse hair, you're totally fine doing that, but I wanted mine to be a little bit shorter. I also did the same thing with the tail. I trimmed it, cut it in half, and then brushed out all the extra that I did not want to have in there so that I can shape it well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take one part Mod Podge and then one part white paint and we're going to mix it together really well. 
because we are going to massage this into the hair of the horse. This is going to allow it to be able to dry rock hard and it's going to allow you to be able to shape it and keep the structure of it when you go to work on the next step after this part. So what you're going to do is you're just going to brush it in with a regular brush. I recommend using gloves because this part is really, really messy. And since all of us are home right now and when we do go out to stores, most of us have these gloves on hand right now just to stay safe and healthy. So go ahead and put your gloves on and then what I recommend is just taking the pieces of hair at you know certain strands and just keep playing with it and massaging it into place to get it to where you want. Once you've got it settled and you like the way it looks go ahead and take that brush and add some more of that paint Mod Podge combo and you're going to just lightly brush it over it making sure that it's nice and pretty much caked on there so that when it dries it's going to stick to the horse and it's going to be rock hard and then you're going to do the same thing with the tail just position it where you want it to be and then add some more to make sure it was nice and sealed so once you've got all of that in place and it's dried for quite some time i would recommend letting it dry overnight you want it to be really really dry before we do the next part you can see here that i'm tapping it that it is rock hard and I can touch it and it's not moving. We're gonna take some spackle and you can get this spackle at the Dollar Tree. This just happens to be a bigger tub that I have. And then we're gonna start filling in those holes where the horse's hair is put into the horse's body and also down at its tail. And then we're gonna start taking it with our hands and start smoothing it over the horse's body to give it that stone type texture to it. Just have fun with this. It can be messy. You can wear gloves again if you want to, but I like using my hands. It's just how I always do it here on my channel. And then you're just going to just rub it all over the whole horse's body. Make sure you get in all the spots so it looks consistent. Once that's all dry, you can take it outside and spray paint it a really dark gray color, and then you can start adding in the texture. I think this is the coolest part. This is where the horse really starts coming to life, and I kept telling myself, this is hands down the coolest DIY I've ever done over and over again, just because it was something that I have been holding on to. This horse, I found this horse three months ago. What you're going to do is you're going to start taking lighter shades of gray and keep going over it, just dry brushing on those coats. You want to make sure each layer of those paints are showing through the really dark gray, the next medium gray, almost a grayish white, and then at the very end, you're going to have almost a white. And you can see here that I'm adding in just a little bit of brown to give it that concrete stone look. And you, again, you don't want to lose the very dark color as the base. You just want to keep brushing it in to show all the texture and where it looks like stone, where it looks like it's been carved or it's been even molded by clay, whatever it is that that look that you're going for. I just think this is the coolest thing. All right, let's move on to this, which is this topiary. I could not believe that this was originally $1.99 and we are going to do it for way cheaper. Now I'm super excited about this project because this is a brand new product at the Dollar Tree. Run, run right now to your Dollar Trees and pick these up. Just don't buy all of them so that I can pick some up too. <laughs> anyway, they're super cool. They are these spheres that are made out of the metal wiring and if you've been shopping there for a while you'll know that they are the same wires that they use for their wreath rings so what i'm going to do to start is i'm going to cut down this sign now it's only because i didn't want to run out to the store and buy another one because they actually do sell these smaller but i just need a base for my topiary so i'm going to cut this down and then I'm gonna put one of the sides back on it so I can get the right size for my topiary base. Again, they sell these smaller signs and I just was being lazy and didn't wanna drive out to the store 
plus I didn't want to spend another buck. I already had this one and I knew I could cut it down to size. So if you have one on hand that's already smaller, then you're all good to go. But once I got that all figured out and cut down to size, I'm then going to take some E6000 and some hot glue to make sure it holds it in place while the E6000 dries. And then I'm just going to take this candle stem holder and I'm going to hot glue it and E6000 it to one of these plastic pots that they have at the Dollar Tree. Again, all of these supplies are from the Dollar Tree and this is super affordable. I spent $9 to make these things versus $1.99. Crazy, right? So once I have my base and everything all done, I'm going to take a piece of foam core and you can see here that it's just a little bit smaller than the base. And I want to be able to make sure that the planner top part and the glass adheres well to the bottom. But if I try to do E6000 or hot glue onto the foam core piece, it's going to eventually pull off and break. So what I've decided to do was trace the base of the candle stick holder, the glass, onto the foam core. I cut it out and then I hot glued that down. And then I took some E6000 and put it on the base that is a thicker, harder surface to be able to hold on to versus that foam core. Added some more hot glue around it and then inserted the glass stem onto the base. This is going to allow it to really dry and bond well. Now these are the floral stems that they have right now. These are the ones I also used to make that vine earlier on the tag. They're called wildflowers and I love them. This other flower here I'm holding was actually around the fall time. I think they carry it all year round. I've seen it for a long time, but I'm going to take off those little greens that you just saw me holding there. Now to make sure your sphere stays in place, you're going to open it up to your liking and then you're going to take your hot glue and just hot glue it into place. Now I want to create it to look like, uh, like dried out vines on it over time like you would see on a regular topiary outside, the stems and the vines. So I'm going to take some twine first and I'm going to just lightly wrap around every single one of its side. And then at the top, I'm going to kind of create a balled up effect by looping it around a bit, going back down one side, looping around the bottom, going back up a side, adding more to the top until I get the desired look that I want for this topiary. And then once you're all done, you're just going to cut it down towards the bottom so you don't see any weird, you know, twine sticking out and hot glue it into place. So here's how the top looks. I think it looks so cute like this, especially when we start adding on all of our greenery and flowers. So you're going to go ahead and just pull off all of your flowers from your bundle stem, the wires, and you're going to cut off the ends to separate them all. You don't want any of them to be clumped together because we want it to look like they're vines trellising up this sphere like you would see outside in a garden. So one by one, you're going to take your hot glue. Don't burn your fingers. <laughs> I did multiple times. And then you're going to put down a greenery, maybe a flower, maybe some more of that greenery. And you're just going to keep going all the way down, mix matching and just keeping it flowing natural and pretty. And I didn't do it the same length on every single sphere side. Some were less, a little lower. Some went all the way up to the very top, that knot that I did with the twine. And you'll see at the very end when I show it all wrapped with all this greenery how you don't want it to be so obviously consistent. You want to kind of make it look like, you know, some are growing better than others and it makes it look more real and natural. So when someone sees it in your home, they'll think, wow, that's so cool. You have something in your house like that. And you'll say, I made it. I made it myself. So here it is, the finished look. And you can see, like I said, some go all the way up to the top and some don't. Now, once everything was dried, I spray painted it black to get that cast iron look like we had as our inspiration. And then I'm going to take just a tiny bit lighter than black, a very, very dark slate gray. I'm just going to lightly dry brush on some of that paint because we want to create that cast iron look, our pot. And then, you know, just add back in some black where you feel like you went a little too light, 
because it's supposed to look like it's black, but you want it to, you know, look like it's cast iron. And then again, because I love this rustic look and this is kind of the theme of what I'm doing with this video and all these projects, I'm just going back in with some brown paint, lightly tapping the corners here and there, and then blending it in with the black to create that really pretty rustic, out in the weathered air, the sea salt air look. Once everything is all dry and you've gone around all your desired places of your pot, you're ready to start filling it in. So I'm gonna take a foam square, cut it down to size, make sure it fits in there really well because we want this to last for a long time. And then I'm gonna hot glue it all into place. I'm gonna also make sure that I stuff around the sides to make sure that it's really snug in there and being held in well by the hot glue. Another tip is that you don't want it to be too high up there because you don't want it to bump into your topiary. You wanna to make sure that it's sitting nicely. Now I'm gonna slow down for this next part because I want you all to see really well what I'm doing and I don't wanna to go too fast. So I'm taking a piece of wire, folding it in half, just like this, and then I'm gonna put it on the end of the topiary that's going down into the pot. And then gonna hold it as close as I can to the topiary sphere. And I'm gonna just twist it to create a nice, tight, twisted piece of wire up at the top. And you're doing this because the topiary itself is going to easily come off if you just only hot glue it or E6000 it. So what I'm doing is, is I'm creating this wire support and then I'm putting some glue here on my foam and I'm going to take that wire and I'm going to shove it down in to the foam and it's going to help hold it down in there even more snug and secure without it falling out. Then once you've got that in place, you can hot glue around the sides where the sphere touches into the pot and it'll stay on there for a really long time and you won't have to worry about it falling apart or rolling away when somebody bumps it. Once you've got that all hot glued in place, you're then gonna take some ferns that they also have at the Dollar Tree right now. I'm telling you, the Dollar Tree has so many beautiful florals. I'm so impressed this year. I think you're gonna hear me say that a lot in my videos. I'll try to hold back on not making that comment every single time, but I just get so excited with each new season, they keep bringing out better and better things. So you're gonna go ahead and put in some of those ferns, and then you're going to also take some of your green moss and fill that in to cover up all the foam. And then I'm just taking some more of these little, you know, um, wildflower stems and I'm just kind of putting them in there. Now to finish off that farmhouse nautical beachy look, I'm going to take some of that thick rope and I'm going to just wrap it around the base. The other reason why I decided to do this is it just cleaned up that bottom base look and I just, I don't know, I personally liked how it looked. You don't have to do this part, but I really liked it. I thought it looked really pretty when it was all done. Then I'm gonna take another rope and I'm going to hot glue the backside so it stays in place and then I'm going to just tie a simple knot on the front and I'm going to fray out the ends of the rope to create, again, that nautical pretty look. I think I've got that on my mind quite a bit, that farmhouse beach look, coastal look, just because we're, I'm thinking warmer weather. It is so cold right now in Missouri. <laughs> I'm missing my California weather that I grew up with my whole life. So this is the finished look. Now this is a proud mom alert. My two boys have started their own channel. It's called Sambal Bricks. It's a Lego based channel where they do all kinds of reviews, build with me's, and just have so much fun being creative. I'm so proud of the two of them. If you haven't already, or you know someone who loves Legos, please head on over there and check them out. It would mean the world to them as they're trying to grow their channel and turn this into an opportunity to help them pay for college and all kinds of fun things that they've set goals for themselves. So everyone who's already head over there, thanks so much for doing that.
These are the supplies we're going to be using. One pack of long barbecue skewer sticks and two grass hula skirts from the Dollar Tree. We're going to take three foam squares from the Dollar Tree and glue them together as well. This is going to become our support system to be able to hold up our long skewer sticks. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a cut line where I know that I want all of them to be the same height. And then I'm going to use some pliers to just cut them and break them all apart. And we're going to need quite a few of these. I'm not going to give the exact number because I want you to be able to make the size you want. You can either do it really big or really small. It's depending on whatever size you want and the possibilities of these baskets are endless. So you can see here that I am using one skewer stick and I'm getting two out of it because I'm cutting them down to size. And then what I did was I put my two longest ones out to the side and then I'm filling them in. So I have two long ones out to the the side they're kind of tilted out two in the middle and then there's four in between each of those joints and then as you see from the top view it creates an oval shape that way we can create an envelope basket now we're going to take our hula skirt and you can see that I'm just sliding these little knotted long pieces of raffia or I guess hula skirt grass that they want to say it is we need six of them and so I'm just taking them unwrapping them and then I'm just gonna lay them all nice and flat so I can gather together six because every time you have six you're gonna be able to weave them onto our skewer sticks so right now to start I twisted it really tight just to make sure I had a nice knot to begin I'm gonna just knot that right around on one of the spots and then once I've got that there, I'm going to go ahead and just start going in and out, in and out, in and out, all the way around the skewer sticks. Come up at the top, it's the easiest way to do it. I like to hold my finger down there at the bottom as I'm trying to weave back and forth so that way things don't pop off. In the beginning, it is a little bit tricky getting it started just because the skewer sticks are not glued in you do not want to glue them in because when we're done we're going to pull them off and I'm going to show you that step on how to finish the bottom side of your basket but right now we're just doing the weaving part so you can see here that I'm going back and forth back and forth back and forth and as you're going you're going to start noticing that there's going to be a pattern you want to be on one side of the stick and then the next side when you pass it around the second loop when you come all the way around the track so at the end of your raffia, your long, I guess, hula skirt grass, you're going to want to make sure you're always tying back on the next section. So you can see here that I took the end that I was weaving with, and then I took six more, and I just tied a simple knot, made sure it was nice and tight enough, not too tight, you don't want a really, really obvious knot, but tight enough to hold it in place, and then I cut off the extra, and then as you're weaving it, those knots should just naturally fall on the inside when you're weaving it. Just make sure you're securing it towards the inside of the basket so you don't see the knots on the outside. And I just keep playing with this. This project was really fun, and surprisingly, it only took me, I'm going to say probably about 40 minutes to do this. It really wasn't bad at all. I actually had something on. I was watching on the Hallmark channel since Hallmark's doing all their Christmas movies right now. So I thought, oh, I'll just watch a movie while I'm doing this. And it went really quick. And I was so impressed that I was able to make a basket out of just hula skirts and shish kebab sticks. Not shish kebab sticks. I always want to call them that. Y'all know that if you've been here for a while skewer sticks. So here I am. I'm just going to continue to create this pattern over and over again until I get to a height that I like. And at this point, just so you can see the details, this is what it looks like. It looks exactly like a basket, friends. Exactly. Can you believe this out of a grass skirt and uh, some skewer sticks? Now at this point, you can see that I have decided to stop. I really like the look of my basket right at this point, and I'm taking some hot glue, and this is how we're going to finish off the top to look really nice and polished. We're taking some hot glue and sticking it underneath the grass that we've weaved on, and we are going to just glue it all into place onto the sticks. This is going to create it to be nice and strong without anything falling off and having any issues. And you notice that I did that top part before I pulled off the bottom because I want to make sure it's nice and secure and in place. 
Then at the bottom, you're gonna just pull back what you have weaved onto those sticks, pull the sticks out gently from the foam, and then repeat the process as well at the bottom, making sure you're gluing everything into place so everything is nice and snug. I didn't go crazy with the glue, I just put a couple little dots and make sure I push things down so that they would all hold into place. And then once that was all secure, I could go in and I could cut off the rest of the sticks. I also forgot to mention when I went around that space with the sticks, one last time weaving, I made sure I tied a knot and then I cut off the extra of that raffia grass so that way it was nice and finished and then I tucked the knot down in and glued that into place. Now that everything has been secure and it's over to the side, we're going to work on braiding some of this long raffia grass. I just took a knot, tied it at the top of several pieces of it, and when you're making your basket, I used about one and a half grass skirts to make the basket part. And then this over here was what was left over. I used about a fourth of the leftover of the grass skirt to be able to create this braided piece that we're gonna be using at the bottom and for a hang up handle for our basket. So once I braided all the way down, I tied a knot on the other side. And now we're at the bottom of the basket. We're gonna pinch it closed. So you can see here that I'm adding hot glue and then I'm using my pliers to just pinch it down in there nice and tight. I want it to be nice and secure. Once I went all the way around and I glued all of that into place, I was able to then go on with my braided rope that I just did, that you saw me do. And now we're just gonna glue that around the bottom to make it have a really nice finish. And this is gonna make it look like you weaved it at the bottom, having this braided rope here. Now I will give a shout out to my girl Yami from the Latina Next Door. She was the first person I ever saw take this raffia grass skirt from the Dollar Tree and she braided it and made a really cute project. I'm going to link her video down below so you all can check out her project and how she used hers because she definitely deserves a shout out. So go give her some love and let her know that's linked in that video down below. I'll make it easy for you all to find it. Okay, at this point I wanted to give it that cute farmhouse look because y'all know I love that. I'm taking some gingham fabric and I'm just cutting it down to size and wrapping it over the top. Now at this point I'm going to take that extra piece of that braid that we used towards the bottom and I'm going to put it on the back. You could see there for a second I was thinking about maybe adding a darker rope to it and then no, I still decided to stick with this lighter grass raffia. I really liked the way that it looked. And then I just tied another knot where I cut it off the extra from the bottom. And now I'm gluing it onto the back with a lot of glue. I want to make sure it's on there nice and secure. So this is going to be hanging up somewhere in my home. I think I'm going to hang it on the island in my kitchen. You will most likely will be seeing this in a home decor real soon. So then once I glued on that back part and I also disguise it with an extra piece of fabric so it looks really polished. I took this round piece of foam that you can get from the Dollar Tree and I put it down inside the basket because I wanted it to stay open and nice and chubby looking. <laughs> We're gonna use the word chubby. But I wanted it to look, you know, full. So now at this point I'm just taking some eucalyptus that I found really cheap during all of these sales they've been having. Um, some hydrangea and then some of the cotton stems from the Dollar Tree. Now we can stop here or add a little something extra which you all know I love to do. I'm taking one of these little garden tags that they were selling at springtime. I popped off the back, added lots of hot glue and just put that right on the front of my basket. All right, our next project, this one is more advanced, but I wanna promise you all it's worth the work and it is so fun to build this one. I really enjoyed it quite a bit and I wanted to share this one as well because sometimes I like showing really easy ones here on my channel and sometimes I like showing more intense things. 
So what we're doing is we're taking some eight by 10 frames. We need four of them. And we're gonna be using more of those painter sticks because y'all know that I really love those painter sticks. And I, what I'm doing is I'm cutting out the frame first with my X-Acto knife, all the canvas that's on it. And I'm pulling off that extra so that I can keep those canvas pieces later and use them for other DIYs on another day. Now, once I've got them all cleared and the staples are all removed, I'm going to measure these long painter sticks again. And you can see here that I'm cutting them down with my miter box again, and I'm going to make sure the size is right. And once I've got the size right, I'm gonna make sure I cut the rest of them to go along the bottom. Now you can see here that we don't wanna see this part that has the staple holes. We want it to be nice and finished on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some wood glue and hot glue so it's that long term, short term seal. So it lets it stay on there until everything's completely dry. Then on that, once I've got the two frames together, I'm gonna to flip it over and I'm going to create a little bit of a shiplap look by spacing them out and stapling those down onto the bottom of this little box that we're creating. Now this is the coolest thing because so far this is super affordable and just so cute already. Now we're gonna take one of those long painter sticks. We're not gonna cut this one. We're gonna do it right here on the side of this box. We're gonna drill two holes and once you've got your two holes drilled all the way through, you're then going to add some screws because this is going to become a tiered tray, which is gonna be so cute. These are super expensive and I want you all to see that with some Dollar Tree products, and some painter sticks, you can make the coolest things. So once you've got that first screw in, make sure you shift it around so it's nice and straight. My drill died at this point, so I had to switch over to a regular screwdriver. And you can see here, once the two screws are in, it's really sturdy, and I put one on each side. Now here is another one of those boxes. I've built two of them. Sometimes the boxes can be a little uneven because the frames can be a little wonky. They're at the Dollar Tree for a reason. Sometimes they can be a little uneven in their sizing. So I just took a little popsicle stick, cut it down to size, and put it on that part that you saw me showing there. And then what I'm doing is now I'm just making sure the measurement is right before I drill my next set of holes to add on to the second tier to this little tray that I'm building. I just think that this would be so cute displayed on a table or you can also use it during parties and put food on them. I just, I love these so much and they're super cheap to make. So now to make sure we really secure everything, I'm just gonna add a couple staples on the frames that we glued together. You don't have to do this, but I wanted to make it really strong and sturdy, and I have a staple gun, so I went ahead and did it. Now I'm gonna take my plunger stick. Yes, I said plunger. <laughs> Dollar Tree sells plungers, and they have wood dowels. So I took off the plunger part, and I took the dowel, cut it down to size with my miter box again, and I'm drilling holes so that I can add in some screws so we can have a handle at the top of our tiered tray. So go ahead and start that first screw in your painter stick. I always like to drill to make sure that it doesn't splinter anything. And then once you've got it in place, go ahead and drill everything together. Now this dowel is going to want to turn and rotate on you, so just make sure you hold onto it as tight as you can as you start to screw together. Now at this point, you can paint it whatever color you want. First I started painting it white and I, I always paint everything white and then I thought, well, hold on, maybe I'll give it some blue because Coastal Farmhouse has been on my mind a lot since I want summer to be here so bad and I wanna get outside so bad. So I'm gonna go with a really pretty icy blue and then I'm gonna distress with a darker blue, like almost a teal and some brown to give it that weathered beach look. So I'm just going around all of the handles and the outsides of the boxes and I decided not to paint the shiplap painter sticks that you see on the inside of me, my tiered tray boxes. I decided I wanted to give it a wood look so it had more of a beachy feel. So once I had on that first coat of blue, I'm going back in with a darker blue and I'm just dry brushing on some darker blue to make sure I give it a really pretty textured look with those different blues, almost as if it has sunned out for a while and it's faded over time. 
Now I'm going to take that same mixture from earlier and I'm going to again use water, brown paint, and a little bit of black and then I'm even going to have a little bit of brown paint here because I want to keep adding it in while I'm also adding in that watery mixture and it just makes it look so beautiful. Once I've gotten all over that first top tiered piece, I'm going to go ahead and move down to the bottom. Now you do want to make sure to not make it too watery because that can start dripping all over the place. So just take your time and let it absorb. I went over each piece probably about two times to make sure the paint really absorbed in. The more you keep playing with it and adding in the brown and the black with the water, it really does make it look like that beautiful beach driftwood. So once you've got that all painted and it starts to dry, you then can go back over with some brown paint. This is when I'm really starting to distress things and you can see those colors really starting to come to life. And then where the screws are, I wanted to make them look a little rusty. So I added a little bit of brown paint and then you don't have to do this part, but I thought it would be really cool to add on some numbers on my tiered tray. So I'm going to do a one and a two, and you technically could put whatever you want on these or not paint them at all. But I sketched on my number first, and now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to hand paint on my numbers with some white paint and a fine tip brush once again. And just take your time because whenever you are painting through these wood slats, it's easy to kind of get it gets a little tricky right around where those seams kind of meet up and you want to take your time right on that spot. So once you've got that all done and the white paint is dried, you then can go back in and sand it to rough it up. So again, it looks like it's just been, you know, out in the sun and been used for many years, which I love that look. And then you're going to distress it a little bit more with some brown paint and you can style it however you would like for many seasons to come. For this project, we are going to be using three different fabrics, orange, yellow, and white, three sticks from the Dollar Tree, three of these foam cones, and two wood stars. To start, we're going to go ahead and fill those wood holes that were drilled out from the twine that was able to be able to hang up the star. We're going to fill those in with some wood filler from the Dollar Tree. And then we're going to slowly with the right size that you need for your dowel sticks that we're going to be putting into this. We're going to drill out two holes. Make sure you don't go through your craft table because that would just be terrible. And I'm going to add in some wood glue as well as some hot glue. Now I found wood glue at the Dollar Tree, which was really exciting. So look in your craft section to see if you can find some in your store. And then I'm going to just put these two dowel sticks down inside of there and hold them until they nice and straightly glued hot in place. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take that third stick and we're going to put it into the top cone and then into the bottom tone to create a taller tree because we're going to create two different heights of this tree that we're making, this candy corn tree. And once you've got those nice and dried, you're going to go ahead and move on to your fabric. So I'm going to create a slit at the top and then just rip it all the way down. I love how it has this rough edge to it. It gives it that farmhouse look for the fall and Halloween time. Time. I am not a big fan of the creepy side of Halloween. I've said that before here on my channel. I like the more whimsical side of the cute pumpkin faces and the friendly witch and the cute cat and candy corn, pumpkins, all of that stuff. I'm not into the blood and the gore. Ooh, that's just not my thing. But I thought this would be a cute project for anyone who is along that same 
wavelength of thinking as me or you can also turn it into more darker colors for a Halloween more gorier side of Halloween if that's your jam too no judgment <laughs> it's just not my thing so you can see here that I'm basically taking those fabric strips and I'm pleating all the way around my cones and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two yellow two orange and then two white and when you get to the very top of your cone you're going to want to make sure that it's nice and finished at the top where you're taking your time pleating it and going nice and close to the top you're going to see it right here where I'm just kind of pushing it up towards the top and the very last one it's a pretty thin slit of the white because you want it to be able to come nice and close to the top and then I'm going to add a cute button for a little bit of a nice pop at the top a cute little detail it was a little orange button and then we're going to add it onto our stick and our star make sure it's nice and straight before you let it go so it's not crooked and then come in with some white paint or whatever color you want to paint your star and your stick at the bottom I went with white and I did two coats to finish the look Our next project is something I am so excited to share because I have not seen anybody make these. This was an idea I came up with when I was roaming around the Dollar Tree one day. I saw these cutting mats and thought I could turn this in to a really cool thing. So I'm going to tell you what it is at the end. Hang in there so you can see all the steps first. We are going to take some paper. I'm just using an old dictionary that I'm constantly using that I'm ripping pages out to either DIY with or using it to paint on top and I'm going to make a little pattern. So I glued four pieces together and then I made two X's at the center point, drew a line up on the side, curved up at the top and then I ended up folding it in half and cutting along that line. This is often how I make a lot of my patterns and I get things to be even on both sides. Once I got it to the point that I liked it and how it looked the right size, I went ahead and took my Sharpie marker because it worked best on these cutting mats. There's two in a pack, by the way, so it only cost a dollar to make this thing. Just wait, you're gonna be super excited when you see this one because these sell for so much. I can't believe that we can make this for just a dollar and it's super easy to do. Go ahead and take your scissors and cut right on that line. Don't worry about having a little bit of that black showing from your Sharpie marker because we're going to be painting it anyway. So once you've got that part cut out, you're then going to take the second piece and we want to create an opening like a pocket that's kind of pushing out because I wonder if you guys can all guess it by this point because we are going to be turning this into a really cute wall hanging flower container. And you'll see in just a second what kind it is. So at this point, I'm gonna bring it out over an inch on each side, even closer to about an inch and a half, where I wanna be able to have it um, make a big enough opening when I curve it because you want it to be curved. So go ahead and cut that all out. You can see here that I measured it out just like I showed and you've got your two pieces. Now at this point you're going to pull out your stapler, just a regular old stapler that you keep in your house, in your office area, and you are going to staple all the way along that whole edge. If one of the staples doesn't go all the way through, all you have to do is just push it down on the other side and then just go all along a straight line and staple all the way through. If you have any hangover, just cut that off. Then you're gonna fold back the plastic to create a crease line so it has a nice rounded edge. Bring it over to the other side, staple the top and the bottom so that you can get it positioned right and then staple all the way across again. Are you all starting to see what I'm making here? Now you're gonna go ahead and fold back the plastic on the other side. You want to really make sure you crease that so it creates that dome feeling where you can put the flowers down inside or whatever you wanna display inside of it. So here I am where I've got my, my front and my back figured out. Now we have to do the bottom. Now you're gonna take that piece where you cut out the second piece that's 
curved on the top and you're going to just find the spot that has the extra that you need to be able to create a bottom for your flower container and you are going to just trace around it create enough of a line and cut past it a little bit because you want to have a little overhang we're going to trim off once it's all done drying so you're going to take some e6000 and a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place short term and long term and you're going to just put it to the side to let it dry i let mine dry for about six hours and then it was good for me to go ahead and start trimming up any extra and then if anything were to pull back you can just add a little bit more of the e6000 as you like so here i am where i've let it dry and i'm trimming off the extra so it has a nice seal at the bottom and then like i said if anything lifts all you got to do is just add a little bit more but mine held really well and I was able to cut away that extra then once you spray paint it you can go ahead and start adding some different tints of gray and you're gonna see here that I'm coming in first with a medium type gray not too dark not too light and I'm just patting it all around because we want to give it that corrugated metal look and we're gonna just keep adding it in. So I'm blotting it on first with my paintbrush and then I'm coming back in with a napkin and I just keep tapping it, tapping it, tapping it. So I'm doing all of one color gray first, tapping it all in. I set it aside because I'm doing two of them for today. I'm setting aside, letting it dry, and then I'll come back in with an even lighter one. And you just keep playing with it until you get that look that you're going for. So you don't have to go all the way down inside and you definitely do not have to do the backside because it's gonna be hanging on a wall or however you display it. You could if you want to. And then I went in with a really light color, really light gray, and then an even lighter white. And I just keep tapping it on until it looks like that metal-y look that these flower containers would normally look like. Isn't this so crazy? At this point, each one of these only cost me $1 to make. So here I am, I just keep playing with it and having fun. And I want you to keep in mind, you can make whatever shape you want. You can make them longer and skinny. You can make them just whatever length or height or width you want them to be. Then once you've got it all dried, you can go ahead and add in some of those form squares from the Dollar Tree and then add in some florals of your liking. I went very neutral because I want to keep these up all year long. I have a place in my basement I think I'm going to put them so I wanted to make sure that they were long term and I added in some boxwood stems off of a long garland that I have from Hobby Lobby. I just, I'm always cutting it apart. I paid 10 bucks for that long garland. It was the best investment. You can see there on the back side that the foam squares were there. I didn't spray paint the back of it because again, nobody's gonna see it. But if you wanted to spray paint it, you totally could. So just keep playing with your floor arrangement until you get it to a place where you really like it and it looks really pretty to you. And again, have fun with this part. Use whatever florals you want. You don't have to do it like me. Now this is an important part if you decide to put a little tag on the front just like I did. I decided to cut a little flap open and then I added some hot glue down inside of it so that way the foam stays in there permanently. I pushed the flap back and then I added some more hot glue and added a cute little tag to the front. I think that the tag being on this makes this even more high end. Again, something that you would see from Magnolia Home. I just love these so much. Now on the back side, you're gonna wanna make sure you cut a hole as well so that you're able to hang it up anywhere in your home. And I just think they're so cute with two of these paired together on a wall. Our supplies are going to be two of these garden hang baskets. They have these out around springtime and I bought a whole bunch of them knowing that this could be turned into a pumpkin. I was so excited to figure this out because I haven't really seen anybody do this. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen anybody use these to turn this into a pumpkin. It is the easiest DIY ever. You're going to just take off the wire chains and then you're going to line up the lines on the baskets and then with some zip ties 
from the Dollar Tree, you're just gonna zip tie every single joint where the bars line up. Then you're gonna take your scissors and you are going to snip off the rest of the zip tie. And make sure you take the part that has that little square on the end where it fastens all together, twist that inward so you don't see it sticking out. Once you've got that done, go ahead and take a jar lid that they have at the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna just use some E6000 so that this stays together nice and tight because this is gonna become the top of our little pumpkin. So we can go ahead and add a stem to it and decorate it how, however you would like, honestly. Then you're gonna take some hot glue on the inside and just glue that in place. Now this tool, I'm gonna to be showing it a little bit later on. I've showed it here before on my channel. It's called a Cropodile. It's used for scrapbooking and fastening on eyelets. I love this tool, but you can see that I used it because it's able to punch through metal like nothing. I mean, it is like using a hole puncher going through paper. So I went ahead and punched two holes so I could take some more zip ties and then fasten that to the top without having to worry about it coming off later. Then I took it outside and spray painted a really pretty fun orange color. You could do this whatever color you want for your pumpkin. And then I'm going to scrape off a little bit of the paint at the top because I want to make sure that it bonds well to the actual metal versus the paint. Over time that can peel away and break off really easy. So then I'm going to take one of these little wood stumps that they sell at the Dollar Tree in their floral section, glue that on, and then I'm going to take some of this greenery and staple it to the backside of that little log. And I did that because I didn't want to worry about these falling off over time and stapling it on there is gonna hold everything together nice and tight. I added some more hot glue and then I'm coming in with this bead garland that you all know that I love here. You're gonna see this a lot throughout this video because I think it's so cute when it's coiled and it makes it look like a pumpkin vine all curly and cute. Then once all that was in place, I added a bow and you are ready to decorate your home. For this DIY, we are going to be using three of these nautical ropes and we're going to turn them into the coolest wreath ever. So we're going to take the three ropes and fold them right in half and cut them because we are going to have two lines that have three ropes glued together and we're going to start weaving them together. Now my best tip is make sure at the very end you put a little bit of glue and twist them into place so that way they don't come unraveled as you're working with them. So once I had those all in place, I went ahead and laid down my first one on the table and then the second one came over the top. Now I'm gluing the pieces together to make sure that they're going to hold their form and then the one on the bottom always comes over to the right. So you can see here that I've taken the bottom one and I've swung it over that rope and now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take it and I'm going to swing it over and we're going to just continue to do this over and over again, swinging it over to your right. So as you're going, you're going to want to make sure that you're gluing the ropes to make sure they keep their form because we're still working in the form of a circle. This is where it does get a little bit tricky. So make sure when you're gluing, you're making sure that you're curving your rope so that it doesn't go too straight and it doesn't lose the form of the circle. And you're just going to keep doing this over and over again until you get to the very end of the rope and it comes all the way together as a circle. So here I am, I'm, I'm making my curve, I'm making my turn, and this is what it looks like when I've gone all the way around. Now you're going to take the ends and make sure they're all nice and straight and even. Glue those together, those two ends, where we started and where we ended and then bring that last one over and then tuck it under and then glue that all into place. Once it's all glued into place, go ahead and flip it over and you're gonna pick a fabric of your choice. Now I'm gonna be going with green because I thought this was really pretty and I had this green ribbon on hand and here comes Comet. He's up on my table and he wanted my attention. I kept telling him to go away and he kept meowing at me and then eventually he just hopped up on the table. So you can see that I took those pieces of fabric and I put them underneath the opening so it would show that color. And then I glued it down to a piece of foam core board 
And now I'm going to exacto knife and cut it out with my scissors. I just kind of went back and forth between the two of them and all the tricky places. Be careful not to cut your rope because this rope will want to fray and come apart. So just take your time on this part and get it nice and clean where you don't see the foam core coming out on the side. When you flip it over, this is what it should look like. It almost reminded me of those baby teething rings. <laughs> I thought it was so funny because it was, it was exactly that shape. Then you're gonna flip it back over and you're gonna start adding in some greenery. I love, love this frosted fern from the Dollar Tree. Anytime I find it when I go, I always pick some more up because I just think it's so pretty. So I added that with some greenery and now I'm taking three bells that I had from Target that I bought last year and I'm just gonna put some twine on them. I did a little slip knot at the very bottom so that way I can make sure that it looks really pretty at the end. And then I went ahead and took all three of those, made them at different lengths, ran them through the loop of the rope, and then I added a bow. We are gonna be making a really adorable bicycle for your front door and we're gonna be needing one of these Frisbees, two of these shovels, and this basket. Now, I also have a tool that I'm gonna to be featuring. I feature it a lot here on my channel. It's called a Cropodile, but before we move on to that, we're gonna take our Frisbee, we're gonna find the center point and cut it right in half. And these cut pretty easily. I'm just using an old pair of scissors that I use for a lot of plastic cutting or popsicle sticks. I always like to keep a pair of scissors like this on hand that are a little dull but still are able to go through things so that way I don't mess up my paper scissors. So I do highly recommend using an old pair of scissors on this so you don't mess up your scissors. Once you've got that cut in half, you're then going to take some popsicle sticks and you're going to just start cutting them down to size so they're small and we're going to go and glue them, a whole bunch of them, all along the rim of the frisbee. This is going to allow us to be able to bring the two sides together and support that middle where it's going to look like a tire on a bike because otherwise it has a hard time staying together and it won't be as strong and sturdy. So I'm just cutting them down. I'm going all along the edge as you can see here that I'm doing and I'm just gluing everything together so that it's nice and tight and secure and it's going to hold the two pieces together. So once I've got that all the way around, I'm taking off the sticker on the inside, I'm adding hot glue on those popsicle sticks, and then I'm bringing together the two sides. And you can see here that I'm adding in that glue and just making sure that it's nice and tight and snug. So at this point, once you've got all of these sides glued and stuck together, we want to conceal this seam line because obviously this is not the prettiest seam line and it's going to be off by just a tiny bit because it's kind of tricky to make sure you perfectly add them up. So what I wanted to do was add some more hot glue and then I found a pretty lace ribbon that I also picked up from the Dollar Tree because all of these supplies are from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to conceal that line and once the ribbon is on there it looks like the tire tread on a bike which is so cute. I thought this was a really cute detail to add to the bike. So I'm adding just a nice amount of hot glue coming all the way around that curve and then cutting off the extra that I don't need. And then now we've got a half part of a bicycle. Now I'm gonna be talking about the Cropodile tool. I've had this tool forever. It's actually a tool to use eyelets on scrapbooking pages and layouts and altered items. I used to be a diehard scrapbooker and I still am but I don't do it as much. But this tool is so cool because it goes through metal. I've had it for years. It goes through hard, hard plastic and you can see here that it has two different sizes to be able to punch holes. I use the smaller one. So I punch two holes on both sides of my tube of my shovel that I took off the handle and the shovel part and then I punch two holes on both sides of that frisbee so that way I can take some zip ties and tighten it together so that way it's staying on there nice and secure and I don't have to just depend on hot glue and E6000. That way it really bonds and holds well and this is gonna be so secure and tight without it falling apart. 
So here I am, I'm just adding in those zip ties and now I'm gonna come back in towards the top and you can see here on the Frisbee, I cut back a little piece so that the, the bicycle tire fits nicely up on it. I wanted to be able to make sure that it all fit really well. So I cut back just a little bit on the top part of that Frisbee so that the, the pull from the shovel can go in there nice and snug and then I just took that zip tie like you saw there I punched some more holes and then I just zip tied it and now I'm going up towards the top and I'm punching some more holes here up at the top and I'm gonna just go through in and out zip tie it and then I'm gonna pull it on and then snug it even closer to that pole where the handlebar would be on a bike. Now to make sure that it doesn't slip out, I'm going to take some E6000 on a popsicle stick and I'm just going to smooth it out as much as I can like frosting a cake and then add some hot glue to make sure it allows it to have that short term, long term dry. And then I'm going to just snip off that extra piece up at the top once it's all dry. Now we're going to move on to our basket and we're going to just take two zip ties and we're going to find a spot on the bike's support bar that we like and we're just going to zip tie on that basket so that way it looks like a cute little beach bike going down on 4th of July. And if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button. All right, I took it outside and I spray painted my whole bike a cherry red. This was so fun at this point because it really came to life and it really looked like a beach bike. Then I took a tote bag from the Dollar Tree. I cut down a piece of fabric so that way I can conceal the foam that's going to be inside. I didn't want to see the foam. I wanted to see the basket and all the fun stuff coming out. So having this little piece of fabric in there is going to allow that foam to be in there without it looking like there's just foam sitting in there. I liked the idea of that being concealed so now I'm just putting some pieces in there and I'm going to fill it all in with flags and greenery just like you would see if you were down at a beach and it was 4th of July this is a really fun thing that we used to get to experience when we lived in California for many years Huntington Beach has these really fun parades and just 4th of July events. So this just reminded me of being in a beach city and living there for a really long time and loving where we grew up and I always miss California around 4th of July because of this reason. So now that my basket is nice and full, I'm going to go ahead and take some rope and I'm going to wrap it around the handlebars to make it look like they're handlebars. I went around the bar first and then I went and took another piece and coiled it up. And now I'm going to just make a nice little circle that's going to fit over the end of the handlebar that's the perfect size. The last thing you're going to do is to add a zip tie on the back to hang it up. The next DIY is probably the one that I am most excited about sharing. I did see another YouTuber have this initial idea. Hers was a little bit different than mine. I'm going to make sure I give her credit. It'll be linked down below titled with the supply list that I'm going to be putting down there. This is actually going to be called um, a three tiered storage unit. So just keep a lookout for that down below in the supplies. But what we're going to do is we're going to take these cooling racks and we're going to need seven of them to create the frame, but you can make this as big as you want. You can add more cooling racks. And again, these are just a dollar at the Dollar Tree. And when you zip tie them together, it is so sturdy and strong. So you can see here that I have the base where the cooling rack little legs are facing down on the ground. So you've got that little support there. I put the two sides and then on the back, I'm putting two of the cooling racks and you can see there that they're overlapped just a little bit so that it creates this perfect box. Then I'm gonna put a zip tie top on and then cut off any of those extra zip ties that we just don't need that are all over the place. 
and then I'm going to put in that middle shelf right at the halfway point you're going to zip tie in another shelf and make sure you're generous do zip ties on the two sides and I used five zip ties on each one of those so you can see the front and the back on the right side the front and the back on the left side and then the one at the very back so it holds everything all together really strong and sturdy so once you've got everything all cut off I took mine outside and I gave it a coat of spray paint because I wanted mine to be black. And then I took an extra one and I traced it onto a foam core board. You're going to need three of these pieces. And then I'm going to take this really pretty contact paper that they have at the Dollar Tree. I love the print of this. I try to use this a lot actually here on my channel whenever I'm going for something more pretty. And I'm just going to wrap the foam core board piece in it like you'd wrap a present. So I'm just making sure everything's nice and tight and smoothed out and I'm gonna cut off any extra that I don't need so it folds nicely on the sides, tuck in those little flaps, add a little bit of hot glue and then pull it over nice and tight so it's all on there really well and it looks really pretty. Now I'm gonna take my Sharpie marker and I'm gonna draw little holes that I know I'm gonna punch out I'm using my crocodile again. You could use a traditional hole puncher for this or even a craft knife, but I have my crocodile, so I'm doing that. And then I'm gonna zip tie that onto my frame. So you can see here that I've spray painted it black. And I just think at this point, it really makes it go from just being Dollar Tree supplies to being high end, especially with putting this little shelf on here. I just love the way this looks. So this is my original take on it. The other friend who did this on her channel, she ended up just having it being the wired racks with um, some storage stuff that she put inside. And I wanted to make mine just a little bit fancier, a little more um, farmhouse country chic, I guess or maybe even a little shabby chic country. I don't know. I don't know what I would call this, but I just think it's so pretty. So here I am. I'm cutting off those black zip ties and I'm going to make this have the three shelves. So I've got the bottom, the middle, and then the very top. I'm also going to put it. And once you see it all together, oh, it just looks so pretty. You would never know that this came from the Dollar Tree. And at this point, I have only spent $8.50 on it. These storage units are super, super expensive and they basically come from very little supplies to make. So if I could recommend this, this could be so cool for a bedroom or a college dorm student or just extra storage in like your laundry room. There's just so many cool things you can do with it. Now is where we're going to make it even prettier. We're going to take these buckets from the Dollar Tree storage section that they have there at their store and I am just going to take these really cute garden tags and I'm going to pop off those back sticks and add on some E6000 and some hot glue making sure that it has that long term short term seal on it and I just think that this looks so stinking cute adding this little tag to the front of it and then I'm going to come around on the sides of my container and I'm going to punch several holes actually I needed a bigger hole than what my crocodile's size is but you punch just a couple times and it'll get the big enough hole size that you need to run your rope through so this is why I love this tool I can go through plastic and metal and you can see here that it's cutting it like it's not even struggling at all then I'm gonna take my rope and I'm gonna cut it down to size and I'm gonna thread it through that hole and hot glue everything down. And when it's all done and you put them on the shelves, it is the prettiest storage unit. Total cost for me to make everything was, I think, $12.50. I'm gonna just say a total of $13 to make this whole thing. And what a beautiful, beautiful project. Today we're going to be using these two different garden basket holders where you can put plants inside of them and hang them up on your porches outside or even inside. And we are going to be cutting away this middle ring that's holding all of the wires into the center to be able to hold flowers. That's because we're going to be turning this into a really cute 
birdhouse cage. Now this idea came from someone I saw online and I want to make sure I give them credit. They went more glam with theirs and I'm not doing that today. So I'm going to go ahead and link their video down below where they have their inspiration so you can see how they glammed it up and made it into like a chandelier. And I will link that down below where I put the supply list for this bird cage. So once you go ahead and use your wire cutters and you snap away that wire circle in the middle, you're then going to straighten out your wires on your basket and make sure they are as straight as possible. Now here you see that it just snapped right where I'm putting my fingers. It is because that is the joint ring of this larger circle. Don't worry if that breaks, I'm going to show you how to fix it. No matter how many times I tried to straighten these up without breaking that part, it just naturally happened every single time. So I'm going to show you how to fix that in just a second. So once you've got your wires all cut off that circle, you're going to go ahead and straighten them out, like I said, as best you can. And then you're going to pull them back a little bit so that they're pulling away. They naturally want to curve in from them being molded that way at the store when they made it. Once you've got it all pulled out just like that, you then can take some twine and you, some hot glue and you could probably use some E6000 too, but that's going to take longer to dry. So I don't think that's necessary. I'm just taking a little dab of hot glue, holding it in place to make sure it dries. And then I'm going to take some twine and you're just going to wrap it around that to make sure it's all nice and stuck together. You could use electrical tape if you have some of that so that you don't have to worry about spray painting it, which is what I ended up doing. I wrapped this around it and then I spray painted it. And the thing is, is you can keep going all the way around and wrap this whole ring, but I decided just to do this one little spot and spray paint it. And once it's spray painted, you don't even notice it at all anymore that it snapped or had an issue at this joint. So once you've got it all wrapped around nice and tight, just make sure you have a nice finish and everything's laying flat. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your pliers and you're going to create a little hook at the end of each one of these long wire pieces that we just straightened out the best we could. So here you are with your pliers and you're going to work your way all the way around the whole circle. You don't want to have a super huge hook and you want to make sure that the hooks are the same height all the way around because otherwise when you go to attach it to the part that you didn't cut, the one over there to my left, you're going to see that the birdcage could be crooked. So make sure all your hooks are the same height all the way around. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just take that other part, the one that you didn't cut, the other basket, and you're going to hook them inside all the way at the same line of that same joint. You can see how my lines of the wires are matching up with each other. And then you're going to take your pliers again and you're going to bend them down and pinch them all into place. Now the cool thing about this project is that each one of these baskets is one dollar. It comes with this really cool chain that you can use for another DIY and repurpose it later. But it costs one dollar and to make one bird cage it's really only two dollars and maybe fifty cents because you're going to see some things I'm going to put towards the top to make it look like it's a bird cage with a little handle at the top. But this is like the easiest project. How pretty could these be at like a wedding reception? How pretty could this be decorated for any season in your home? And I'm really excited because I think I have some ideas for this for Halloween to do some things with this craft and this idea. Once you have all the wires all tightened in place and you want to make them as tight as possible, you're then going to take this flat part that comes from those caps from those glass jars you can get them from mason jars or the Dollar Tree caps that they have as well. And then you're going to put that on the top and you're going to use a combination of E6000 that's going to seal it long term and then hot glue to hold it in place while the E6000 is drying. I like to make sure that I went all around on every single one of those little bumps to really make sure that it was nice and sealed onto it. So it really had a good bond. And then I took a popsicle stick and I'm just applying it where I'm rubbing it up against that metal black rod that goes up into it and just rubbing it all over to make sure everything's nice and sealed. And I try to do it as nice and clean as I possibly could. Then we're going to take one of these ping pong balls. I thought this was the funniest thing to put on here, but you know what? Sometimes the most random things can turn out to be so beautiful and look like the real thing. So I just did a little snip. It's really easy to cut. Do a little circle. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
and you're doing this so that it'll lay flat on top of that can lid top and you're going to add some more of this E6000 all over the ping pong ball and you're just going to nicely snug that right on there and you can add a little hot glue once again to make sure it holds in place while it dries. Now here is the next thing. You could make this bird cage as tall as you want. You can do two tiers, three tiers, four tiers, however you want. And the more you play with it, it's just so cool to do different heights and stack them all up on a table. This is the cutest DIY. It's a little advanced. I will say if you're a new crafter, this not, might not be the one you want to start with, but you're going to start by taking your sign and cutting it down to size. Now on this day, you're going to laugh at me. And I know if you're a diehard crafter, you will know that sometimes you do things a little wonky because you can't find something. So you just kind of wing it, whatever. <laughs> I took my scissors, scored it first, and then I cut it and then snapped it. Now normally I would like to use my sharp like carpet cutting blade, but I could not find it this day. So here I am just winging it and going with it. So once you've got it cut down to size at 17 and a half inches long, you're then going to take your long painter sticks, measure them to the length that you need, and then cut them down to size. Now I'm going to also make sure that I cut two for the long sides and two for the short sides, but I'm not going to give you the measurement for the short sides because sometimes Dollar Tree can cut things a little off and I don't want to give you the wrong measurement so just make sure that you hold your painter stick up to the sign and then mark off where you need to cut. Now for that painter stick rod, that wood dowel, you're going to go ahead and just cut off the rounded tip and it should hit at 17 inches long. Then once you've got all your pieces cut, you can go ahead and just make sure they fit properly around your sign and then you're going to glue it on the side where they butt up and then at the seam so that this makes it extra strong. Once you've got that first one on, you can start moving around the rest of the way. Make sure it's glued in place and really sturdy so that it can help support each other. And as you keep adding on another wall of this box, it gets stronger and stronger as you go. Now I would like to recommend if you're going to do this project to use a staple gun. I'll link the one down below that I use all the time in my videos. I love it. I purchased it on Amazon and it's really craft friendly. I like to have it in my craft room whenever I'm working on projects like this. So I'm just going to simply take the staple gun and line it up and then just staple around the sides to make sure that it's strong at all those connecting points. Now it's really not going to fall apart on you and this is going to last for a really long time. Then I'm going to take a traditional size painter stick. I'm going to glue two of them together and I'm going to do that twice. This is going to become the handles for the box that we have. Now I'm going to be switching over to a drill bit so that I can drill holes. I like to pre-drill into painter sticks. The wood is not the strongest wood and sometimes it can split if you go through it with a screw. So I do recommend taking a drill, drilling down in. Now again, <laughs> doing things a little wild on this channel. I'm not going to drill on a traditional drill table. <laughs> I'm doing it on my craft table. So I'm just lifting up as I go before I go through my table. But again, you should probably do this in your garage. Then I'm going to just take the screw and screw them together on both sides so that you can see where the handles are. And then before I staple them down, I put some hot glue right on the sides to hold that into place to make it strong and then came back in and reinforced it with my staple gun on the inside of the box, making sure that it's stapled down really well and it's not going to come off and last for a really long time. Then to clean up the look, because I love a finished backside, I took my white paint, I painted the bottom with two coats of white paint, and then I also painted the inside of the box completely white so that it's a nice clean look on the inside of the box. But the outside of the box, I went ahead and did a whitewash all over the whole box. Now, if you've never heard of whitewashing before, it's super, super simple. You take a traditional white acrylic paint that you can get super cheap, and you're going to add some water to it to the consistency that you would like. And then you just mix it together 
and then lightly brush it on, wipe it off with a dry towel, wipe some more on, wipe it off until you get that wood look that you would like. Now I want it to look a little more beaten up. So I'm going to add some black paint to that and I'm just going to make a light gray color. I'm going for a really old industrial looking painter garden box, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But I just like to just keep adding stuff on. And I also took some white paint at the end and just kind of splotched it on on certain parts so it looked kind of drippy. Then I'm going to move on to the garden pots for this DIY. Like I said, this one is a little more intense for a DIYer, but anyone can try it if you feel comfortable go for it. I encourage you all to try new things. But you're going to take your little terracotta pot so you can get from the Dollar Tree right now and you're going to put some Mod Podge around the base where that lip is and then you're going to take some paper. Now I love using dictionary paper on this particular type thing when it works with Mod Podge and paper just because it's um, more of a rice type paper and it just goes on these pots beautifully. So go ahead and just put that paper all around it get it all sealed in real well and then the other half of my pots I'm going to take some white paint and I'm going to just dry brush all around I'm going to just very very lightly put on my paint and then just go around the pot and you can see how it's adding so much texture and depth and it's making them look a little more aged and distressed. Now we're going to take these florals and we're going to start assembling our floral box. I cannot wait to show you all the finished look. I think this is hands down my favorite DIY I have ever done here on my channel. I cannot wait to display this in my home for this spring. I'm going to be decorating with it in just another week, so I cannot wait to show you all where I put it. Then we're going to take these terracotta pots that we just distressed and made them look real cute and we're going to take some of these foam squares. Now I will say that hot glue does not stick to these very well. I do like the white foam squares better, but I had the green ones on hand, so that's what we're going to work with. Then you're going to take your flowers. I like to cut them away from those stems, like I said earlier, and this time I did it. And I'm just going to cut them down to the size I want and put them down inside there. Now a trick about these pots, I like to boost them up by putting some foam inside of certain ones to make them look a little more wonky, like they're stacked and filled with dirt. And you're just going to start putting your flowers in and your pots wherever you'd like. You're going to notice how I'm going to put a pot here on its side because I just think that looks so pretty as if it had fallen over in a garden shed and it just looks really nice. And then just play with your florals, putting in whatever you would like. And I'm going to go with a lot of neutrals. I'm going to go with cream and green and a little bit of a pop of yellow and a little pop of purple that are on these more succulent looking plants. I don't know what they're called. I'll, I'll link everything down below. Okay, and then the Dollar Tree also had these super cute little flower garden tags. So I'm going to just paint on the word roses, and I'm also going to paint a little sign that says $1 because, again, I want it to look like you would see this at a garden shop or in a garden shed, and I just think it's so cute. It's something Maybe even like you'd see at a farmer's market. Our next thing we're going to be doing is using these long painter sticks and I love these things. In fact, I had a video that came out that was all about using wood, these painter sticks, popsicle sticks. I'll link that at the end of this video so you can all check it out if you want to see it. And there were tons and tons of projects showing how much I love using these painter sticks. I'm also obsessed with these, just like the burlap. Apparently I have this crafting theme going. <laughs> Rustic is the game, I guess. I don't know. But here I am. I'm just going to be cutting down these pieces because these are going to become the support system at the bottom because we are going to create an adorable 4th of July tray that has an American flag look to it. So you can see here that I've got seven 
of these painter sticks that are spaced apart just a little bit to give it that shiplap look. And then I'm gonna add on these pieces that I cut down. You saw earlier that I was kind of pushing the two pieces of wood up against it to make sure they were nice and straight before I glued them down because you just don't wanna have that issue where they're crooked before you glue them down. Now you can see that I moved over that bar or the rod or the stick boy I was having a hard time finding that word but moving over that painter stick a little bit to avoid those little divots on those painter stick handles I just thought that was cute to leave that there as a little detail so I stapled everything down just like I saw there I'll link my staple gun I love this thing you all if you've been here returning for quite some time you will know that I love my staple gun and my miter saw box I use it all the time I'll link it in the description box but once I got everything stapled down I'm going to now take another stick and I am going to just glue it to the side and I'm pushing it down to the table so that it is nice and flat versus having it kind of raised up above where those supporter sticks are at the bottom. We want to see a nice flat side so make sure you come all the way down to the table and now I'm just going to measure out around the sides because I want to create a frame all around this little tray box that we're making and I just think that this is going to look so stinking cute on a table to display in your home somewhere and so see here I'm just adding some more hot glue putting on those sides that I cut down and now I'm just kind of eyeballing this part was probably the trickiest if I'm being real with you all I didn't want the staples to accidentally come out on the wrong side and so when it did I had to pull them back out until I kind of got the right spot I realized that on the side of my staple gun there was actually a marker that showed where the staples came out for whatever reason I finally figured it out and then after that I was able to align all the staples up just right and be able to go all the way around supporting this box where it's nice and sturdy so here's the thing once you add in those staples with the glued painter sticks together it really becomes so strong and sturdy it is so high-end and super cute I could totally see something like Pottery Barn or even like Magnolia Home carrying this just depending on what colors they might use but I just I think it's so cute so now I'm going to add some circles. I'm just kind of lining it across with a little pencil so I know where to drill because I decided it would be even cuter and more high end if I drilled in a couple holes so I can add some handles onto this tray. I just thought, well, why not add some handles so you can just add a little more texture, a little more design and element to it. So I'm just going in with two holes on both sides and then I'm going to take some twine a little bit later on but first we're going to paint it because I decided before I added that twine rope to it I didn't want to accidentally paint it or make a mistake so now I'm going to take a painter stick create a line across four because that's going to be the blue part and now I'm going to come in with the red and I'm going to paint all of those red that need to represent the red stripes on that flag. Now obviously I don't have 13 stripes because that would just be the biggest tray ever. <laughs> but I am going to have the seven stripes so you know it still has the fill. It's not accurate exactly. You could make a bigger one if you wanted to but I'm not going to do that just because of how big that tray would end up being and I want this to be able to be fitting on my coffee table in my front room so here I am you can see that I've come all the way up to that line and then when I get over to the siding of this box tray I'm just taking my time and just painting all along I'm not going down into the sides of the painter stick I'm just staying at the top and then just having fun I really love painting projects like this you all know that have been here for a while I, I love hand painting so much so here I am just showing you all the steps of just taking your time I am using an angled brush I will say that that is one of my favorite brushes to use is a little angled brush because then it lets me get into those crevices without making a mistake and I'm not adding a ton of paint too you should never have paint so much that it's dripping off of your paintbrush because then it's just gonna spill on your project somewhere 
And then you saw there at the end, I always love keeping my paint. I don't like wasting paint. I'm super frugal like that. So whenever I have too much paint on my plate, I will just scoop that back up and put it back in the bottle. And that way my paint lasts forever. So now here you can see that I'm gonna be painting four of the painter sticks blue and it doesn't it look so cute with the little divot in on that handle originally there i just i'm so glad i kept that part and didn't cut that off if that's not your thing and you want to cut that down you totally can if you have a little miter box or some type of a saw and you can do that too but i really love the way it looked like that so now i'm going to go ahead and add in the white and then i'm also going to do kind of a rustic brush along the box of it. I wanted to still show some of the wood so it has that aged look and then after everything was dry I'm going to come back in and sand it. Now again I know some of you do not like this much of a rustic look for farmhouse. Some, some of you like the more clean side but I am going to sand it a little bit just because I thought it was super cute. Now I will say about my style in my home I love for my furniture my like my couch and cabinets I like them to be a clean very traditional looking piece of furniture without a lot of distressing or actually almost no distressing but my home decor I love having distressed home decor pieces and by by distressed I need to clarify and say that I don't go super super rustic looking I, and I know that that's a look out there too. And when I see people do it, I think it's so cute. But, you know, I think I push my husband's uh, boundaries sometimes when he sees me roughing things up. He likes things really clean. So I try to find the balance on both of our styles so that we both feel like this is our home, not just my home. <laughs> so here I am at this point. You saw me trace on those stars and I am painting them white. So that way it, they look nice and crisp and clean. And I forgot to film it, but I did go back in with a little bit of brown paint and just did a dry brush technique on it. Now on the handles, I'm going to take some rope or a thin or a thicker twine. I'm gonna tie some knots, add a little bit of hot glue, and then just cut those off so that the handles can be pulled back and stay in place. supplies are going to be two by four pieces of wood that we're going to cut down to size. The cutting is super simple. I'm using my brand new saw table. I'm so excited. I finally have invested in one of these. I've been saving up for a while and finally got one and I'm just using straight cuts and a 45 degree angle cut. Now this wood is actually really old wood, which is why I'm needing to sand it down really well because it came from the wall in between my living room and kitchen. Most people would see that wood as trash, but for myself, I saw it as a treasure. And so I've been holding on to it. And when I realized, oh, I can make cute little houses out of it, I definitely knew what wood to be using. And so basically these houses are going to cost me pretty much nothing other than the cost of paint and painter sticks that we're gonna be using since this wood came from our house. Now, I had so much fun with this part because I love painting. I've always loved painting. I love just, you know, getting my hands dirty and just playing with whatever mediums that I'm working with when it comes to painting a project. So for the houses, I painted a few of them white, and then I'm gonna go in with some more fun colors because this is my coastal week here on my channel. And I'm going to be adding in some coral, some really creamy, pretty citrusy orange, and then a really pretty mustard yellow. I thought that these would look so cute all together with them being distressed some. Almost think like a little village next to a seaport, the coast. I just think there's something so cute about them and it makes me think that they're summery. Plus the colors lend really well going into fall time. And because I have so much wood from that wall, I'm actually planning on making a ton more of these with different colors throughout the year because I just love these that much, I guess. 
Now for the rooftops, I'm gonna take the long painter sticks because they're a little bit thicker than the smaller ones. And I'm gonna just cut them down to size for my rooftops. A tip about these painter sticks, make sure when you're putting them up on the house that has the peak right in the middle, you're gonna wanna make sure that you kinda overlap the house roof up at the top just a little bit. And you'll see it towards the end of the video, but you just wanna make sure your roof line they, they match up perfectly up at the top. So one side needs to be just a tiny bit longer than the other side so that they come together nicely at the top of your roof. And then as you can see here, I've painted them all different colors because I just thought it was so cute to have this different interest in all these different houses and make them look so unique to themselves as if you would see it in a little town. And then for this particular house, how I cut the wood, I stood it up on its side and then did my 45 degree angle cut so that the roof line is coming out more of a shingled roof out towards the front. I thought that that was a cute touch just to turn the direction of my cut lines. And then I'm just adding on two pieces up here at the top that are the same width for my painter sticks. And then I'm gonna just come on into the other houses where they are gonna be meeting up at the top as you can see here. I'm taking one that's a little bit longer like I mentioned and one that's a little bit shorter and just perfectly lining them up there at the top. Now for my glue, I'm using wood glue and hot glue for that short term, long term hold. I really like the idea of doing both of them just because it really does allow you to have a nice quality finished project versus over time if you were to drop them they could just pop right off with hot glue so i really like to use a little bit of wood glue anytime i'm ever working with glue now the crazy thing is because these all came from my walls pretty much i'm i'm spending basically pennies to make these and people charge so much now we're going to take some tongue depressor sticks from the dollar tree and i'm going to just cut them down to size to create some really darling doors this actually felt like the perfect size for these little houses i love the width size of them and so i'm just going to cut them at all different angles and then i'm going to take some drywall nails i found that these ones were the closest look to a chimney that i could get because the top of the head was a little bit wider because it's for drywall and i just went ahead and added a couple of nails in each one some of them only got one and it was to create a chimney smokestack look to them i just think that this was such a cute detail and again pennies to make these i have been seeing these on etsy and people are selling these like a set of three houses for so much money friends again you can tell that the wood was free the painter sticks cost a dollar for three of them paint you probably already have it popsicle sticks tongue depressor sticks Again, you probably already have it. These things cost pennies. And when I see that they're being sold for 40, 50 bucks, I just feel like, oh friends, <laughs> save your money. Unless, unless you don't wanna make them and it's easier just to buy them, then I support your decision. But I just want you all to see that taking something like some scrap leftover wood really can make such a huge impact. Now here in my houses, I'm gonna add some windows. My husband was, kind of making fun of this house in particular he's like do the people on the second and the third floor not get windows <laughs> which made me laugh but i i personally like them spread out so every house just have fun with it and just create windows that you love For this project, we are gonna be making a lantern and we're gonna take these long paint sticks, these painter stirrer sticks. I hear people call them all kinds of different things, but they come from the home improvement stores locally to you. And we are gonna take the long ones and cut down eight of them. These are gonna become the side structures for our lantern that we're making. And then once you've got eight of those all cut down to the size that you need, and they need to all be the same size, you're then going to go ahead and take some wood stakes that you would use in your garden. I see a lot of people use these around their gardens, but these are wood stakes that you can also pick up from your home improvement store. And I'm gonna be using a combination of wood glue and hot glue for that long-term, short-term hold 
to make sure that it nice and strong bonds together. We are gonna have six of those. This is going to be the base of our lantern. I'm gonna leave all the measurements down below so that it's not making this video too complicated. So if you're needing the measurements, go ahead down to the description box and you'll see them down there. But I'm gonna go ahead and glue all of those six pieces together to create a very pretty, nice, solid base. Now you could do these with the painter sticks. I decided to use these wood stakes instead because I just liked how they were more substantial, thicker, sturdier looking. I just liked how they looked. But again, you can use painter sticks if you would like. So once you got all of those all wiped and cleaned up, because you could see there that I was pulling off some of that extra glue that kind of squirted out, you're gonna go ahead and start gluing on the sides. So again, I'm using the wood glue with the hot glue, long-term, short-term hold, and then to make it really strong and sturdy, we are gonna take our staple gun and we are just going to staple in a two staples on it to make sure that it's nice and strong. And by the time we're done with this thing, it is gonna be so sturdy and it is just gonna be so pretty on your front porch or wherever you decide to use it in your home. So now I'm putting on the other side and I'm just making sure that the sides match up and then I'm gonna move on to the next. And I'm just gonna keep putting the two corners on, making sure that the sides match up with each other so that it is nice and smooth on the sides. And then you can see even as I'm going up, I'm putting little dots of that wood glue and hot glue to make sure that the top and the bottom and the sides are all glued together and then adding two staples at the bottom. So as I get around the corner to my fourth leg, I noticed something started to happen with this and I thought I would just mention it all so you would know. And I noticed that towards the top, you could see that they're starting to bow in towards the top. So when you go to glue on these support pieces, which I'm doing right here, I cut down eight of these smaller painter sticks because I wanted to wrap them around the bottom and the top to create a nice, pretty finished look and a structure to it. I cut eight of these, but you can see here that it's a little bit not all the way up to the edge because I want, again, I'm going to show you in a second, add another piece to it. But up here at the top, when I went to go put up this piece, you can see that it's not fully lining up. So I had to actually pull it out from each other and make sure that it was not crooked. And that just happens with wood. Sometimes it'll just shift on you. So you're going to see here that as I staple it, I'm going to pull it out. You can see what I'm talking about. It wants to kind of collapse in a little bit. So just make sure you pull it out, glue it into place that hot glue so it'll hold it into place while the, the wood glue dries and then just staple it. And then I just flipped it over and did it on the other side, making sure everything was nice and straight and all glued and stapled together. Now, now, like I said earlier, you saw that I had a little bit of a spacing between those top parts and I'm going to show you in a second. I'm going to fill them in with some really pretty smaller square pieces of wood that I just happen to have in my craft room. You don't have to do this. You could make those painter sticks that are coming around the bottom and the top the exact length, but I wanted to have a little bit more detail. So I'll show you that in a second. But right now at the top, we're gonna to take some more of those wood stakes and I'm going to use my miter box. Now there's a straight cut and then there's a 45 degree angle cut. And you can see that I'm just going to cut at an angle and I'm going to allow this to create a miter edge at the top, which is going to make it look so high end and pretty. I love this little cutting toolbox. I'm gonna to link it down below as well as my staple gun. I get asked about it all the time. And then see here, all the four pieces all cut with that little side angle. Now they are all gonna miter together beautifully and look super high end. So here I am, I'm adding some more of that wood glue, hot glue, and I'm just gonna go around making sure every single side is pressed together really well so there's not a big gap. And then if you have any glue squirt out from pushing it together, just again, wipe that away so it has a nice clean finish. And then once you get around to that last side, I'm gonna set this over to the side just for a minute while I go back over to my actual lantern and add on this piece right here. 
So here is the piece I was talking about. I had this in my craft room. I thought this would be really pretty. So on those eight pieces that I cut down to size to wrap around the bottom and the top, four of them I cut a little bit shorter and the other four cut a little bit longer so that I can put this piece on there. I thought this would look so pretty to add on this little detail where you have this little corner that's kind of popped up and it's just gonna fit in there nicely. I'm adding in some more hot glue and some wood glue once again because I just wanna make sure that this is built really well. And I mean, this cost nothing. At this point, these are just seriously painter sticks, stir sticks, and these wood stakes. And look at how we can build the most cool things from it. Now, I could leave it like this, or we could make it a little more special. You know how I like to do it here on my channel. I like to take it a little further and just challenge myself a little bit more each time. So I'm gonna take these long sticks. They're not shish kebab sticks, they're I always forget what these ones are called. Leave a comment down below. I think steaks? No, nope, that's not it either. Either way, these long shish kebab sticks, we're just gonna go with that name, but they're the really long sticks and I'm just gonna cut them down to size because I want to create a really pretty crisscross design work on the inside of this lantern and just add a little more something special to it. I thought that this would be really pretty. So you're gonna need two for each opening on your lantern. And you can see here that I'm simply just measuring it on the inside of the box first for my first cut. And now I'm just going back and cutting everything down to size so that it all fits perfectly inside of those spots. Once I had enough of them all cut, I'm gonna add in some hot glue into the corners and then I'm going to put them at an angle. I'm gonna go one way Make sure you hold it into place so it's nice and set. Add a little more glue on top of it so it's nice and glued in place so it doesn't move around on you or lift up. And then you're gonna go the other direction, the other corners, and you're gonna add some more hot glue and then just press them down. Now these are gonna to wanna to not lay flat that second one. So you're gonna to have to hold it down for a little bit while the glue dries. But again, this was super simple to do. So once I went all the way around with all four of those, I added some glue to the top and then I put on my miter top that we made earlier. And at this point, it just looks so pretty. I was so excited for this project. And as my family was coming down to check on me to see how I was doing with this project, they all started saying, oh, it's a lantern, <laughs> which I had this thing for lanterns. They weren't sure at first what it was. My husband thought at first it was a trophy box, which I laughed because you never know with me. <laughs> so once I gave it a nice coat of paint, I'm gonna take some rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm actually gonna braid it. I thought it would be really pretty to have a nice thick substantial rope on this. I braided it, brought the ends together and just hot glued them so that they were nice and secured. And then I actually used one rope bundle from the Dollar Tree. I had took three long pieces that were equal length and then this was the little piece that was left over. I just unwrapped it and I'm gonna use that to bring it all together at the end, those little scraps that you saw me there pulling apart from the rope. So I wrapped it around the top of my lantern. I added in some hot glue to make sure it stays there forever. I don't want it to come off. And then I'm gonna add some more hot glue right here and that scrap piece of rope that was left over after I braided these. I'm gonna just wrap that around a few times to make a very pretty finished look up at the top. I loved how this turned out so, so much. And then you don't have to do this part, you can skip it, but y'all know me. I just love a little roughed up edges, especially cause I love that coastal look. going to be making this really cool tomb that I found online at our church bookstore. I could not believe that they were selling the larger one for 100 bucks and the smaller one for 60 bucks. Here are the dimensions and sizes that you're going to need. I used one foam cord board to cut these all out. Everything will be linked down below. But once you have them all cut out, you're going to go ahead and take the front part of your tomb wall and you're going to cut out a door, the opening that 
you're going to see in our example and our inspiration. And then you're going to take, after that, you're going to take the back inside wall and you're going to paint it. That way, so when you look through the door, you'll see that the inside of the tomb is painted and it looks like stone on the inside versus it just being like an afterthought and you forgot to paint that part. Now you're going to go ahead and take the sides, the front door and the back wall and glue everything to place. Make sure you use some extra reinforcement glue once you glue the sides together. I like to go back in along that seam and add it. And then you're going to go ahead and glue on the top. Now I created the top to have a little bit of overhang so that if it gets a little wonky when you're gluing things together and things bow, you can cut off any extra so it's a nice seamless edge at the top. Now you're going to take the two bottom pieces, this is the base, and we're going to glue them together because we want it to be nice and strong so that it has a nice platform for it to sit on. And you're going to see here that I don't want to glue it all the way in the center or towards the front too much. You want to glue it more towards the back so that it has a nice lip towards the front to decorate with some things. Now we're going to be using this putty or spackle. I hear people call this different all the time, but this is basically the stuff that you use to patch holes when you're about to paint a wall. I love this stuff. It dries super fast. When it's still wet, it'll feel kind of spongy, so you want to make sure that it's completely dry before you paint it. But basically, this stuff dries pretty quick. I won't say that it'll dry in an hour. I would give it probably maybe like a full day to let it dry before you paint it. But here I am, before I let it dry, I'm pushing back some of the spot towards the front so I can get back to that foam core and I'm going to glue down some popsicle sticks so that I can or tongue depressor sticks so I can create a frame just like our inspiration or the original tomb that's in Jerusalem and we're going to just frame out the door now when it comes back to this the putty or the spackle you're going to want to make sure that you're putting on a nice thick enough layer so that you can create a brick look it's basically like frosting a cake. If you've ever frosted a cake, you can totally do this. This is not hard to do at all. And you can see here that I'm adding some texture to it. I don't want it to be super smooth because you want it to look like natural stone. The more texture it has to it, it's going to look more like the real thing. So I'm going around all the sides and then I'm going around the bottom base. You don't need to do the very bottom of it. I don't think that's necessary so it has a nice flat surface but I'm also going on the inside of the tomb on the floor just to make sure I get some of that texture there too so that it looks like everything was thought through when you peek through the door you can see on the inside. Now when you're doing the tomb door the big circle make sure that you don't go all over the whole thing you want to leave one spot that has a little bit of that foam cord exposed now you're going to go ahead and take a popsicle stick with a wet damp paper cloth or a wipey next to you and you're going to start creating your bricks this part was so fun i recommend keeping something moist next to you so that you can keep patting it down because you don't want the putty to get stuck to your fingers or the popsicle stick, the more damp you keep it, the, it's going to allow you to be able to play with it. Just like if you took a clay class, you'll know that when you keep your hands wet, it allows you to mold and work with the, the putty or the clay. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We want to create that rock look. You can see that I'm creating the lines and then I'm going back in and I'm kind of patting them down and smoothing them out. Now here's the tomb door again where I mentioned don't cover the whole thing. I left a little bit of that foam core board exposed so I can put some hot glue and then glue glue it to the popsicle sticks. Then I pushed it down and all the putty will just adhere to each other with that hot glue and it'll stay on really well. Now we're going to move on to decorating. This was the most fun part of this whole project. You're going to push back some of the putty because again you want to glue these things like rocks and decorative plants to the actual foam core. You're going to push back some of that putty and then hot glue the rocks to the foam core and then go back in with some putty and you're going to fill in around the rocks because you want it to look like they were cemented into the rock wall. I'm also going to show you up here at the top. I put three of them up here so you could see how that looks. And it's a better view where you can see that I'm going back in with that extra putty. And I'm just kind of working around the rocks. I smoothed it all out. And then I would wipe away what I didn't want on the rock. Once everything is dry, you can move on to painting. And again, make sure it dries completely before you start painting because it'll destroy your rocks. It'll 
not be ready to be painted. So I'm using brown and white and a little bit of black and whatever color you think will work best for yours, but I wanted it to have a real rock texture. And you can see here that I've got all different types of colors, so you get that different rock shaded tinted look. And you don't want it to all be one straight color because it'll look like it's not the real thing. So just keep playing with it and having fun. There's not really any wrong way to do this. You're going with the darkest colors first and then you're going to start lightening it up as you go. Make sure you get the floor on the inside of the tomb as well so you don't forget to do that part. Then up at the very top, I'm going to show you how I dry brushed it. I went with the lightest color once I got the coloring right that I wanted. And I took a towel with my brush and I basically went in and just dry brushed this really light white color, creamy tan color right on top. So that way it would look really like a stone or like the sun was hitting it on certain parts. I thought this part was so fun. Actually, the whole project was really fun for me. I think this is my favorite project that I have ever, ever made. Then once you've got your whole tomb painted and you've got that rock look that you love, go ahead and take some water and some brown paint. And I would recommend going in really lightly first as you keep adding to those popsicle sticks to create those wood beam doors. And then once that's dry, you're going to go ahead and get some floral little picks that you have around in your floral section in your craft room and you're going to again move back a little bit of the putty with maybe a craft knife to dig a hole and then hot glue stuff down in. Now a recommendation to make it look real, like real plants that you would see in Israel, you're going to take some of the green moss and some of this brown dried dryer moss, I don't know what this like stuff is called, but you're going to mix them together to create more of a tumbleweed moss look as weird as that sounds and then you're just going to keep gluing in and just playing with it and creating some little desert type plants around the tomb on the base of this project that we're making here For this DIY, I'm going to be using this staircase spindle that I also picked up from Habitat for Humanity, as well as some Dollar Tree products. You all know I love my Dollar Tree DIYs, and so I'm going to be using this staircase spindle to make the most beautiful farmhouse angel that I know you're all going to get so excited when you see how I create the wings, because it is really something. All right, we're going to take these two signs, and we're going to lay them right next to each other with the spindle right in the middle and we're gonna start just tracing out these wings. Now I love using these signs because you can cut them and shape them to whatever you might need for your project. It does take a little bit of elbow grease, but you know what, once you get the shape you want, you can do some cool things. So here I am at this point, I'm taking my craft knife and I'm making sure I'm cutting on my mat. Don't ever cut just directly on your table, obviously, but I'm just gonna say just in case you're a new crafter. And I'm just scoring all along these and I'm cutting them and snapping them as I go and if there's any rough edges, I'm going to be snipping it with my scissors or my craft knife in any tough areas and then sanding it to get the shape that we need. Once I've got two of those done, I put them to the side and we're going to start working on the body of the angel. So we're going to take this sign from this little wood plaque actually from the Dollar Tree. I filled in the holes and then I'm doing a countersink hole right here. My drill bit is not big enough. You all know if you've been watching for a while, I need to get bigger drill bits. But I'm going in with a smaller drill at this point and I'm going to just pre-drill some holes to make sure I don't splinter or crack anything because this stairway spindle is pretty old and I don't want to have any issues with it. So I went ahead and started my screw, got everything all lined up and I'm putting on some wood glue and some hot glue for that short term, long term hole that you all know I love so much. And now I'm going back in and I started to screw it in and now I'm just twisting to get it in place and then I'll go back in one more time to really sink in that screw and it should be nice and flat at the bottom. Now this is the cool part where the wings start to happen. I'm so excited about this part. I went ahead and took my staple gun and I'm just going to staple all up the spine of this angel. 
and I'm gonna do it on both sides and it is so secure on here friends now this is where it really starts to come to life I'm gonna take the smallest popsicle stick that there is and then we're gonna just keep cutting them down we want to have the rounded edges this is the bottom of the wing and then we're gonna just keep adding on more pieces as we add on more and more and more we keep shifting our way up and just have fun with it move things around make sure that you're trying to cover up any gaps that would show that original sign once i got that part down i moved up to the tongue depressor stick size did a few rows of that made sure i was curving along the edge and then i moved on to these really big sticks that i picked up from walmart and i love these because they cover even more surface and this is really where it's going to start to take the shape of that wing when you get to the top just keep using your pencil to create the shape that you need cut things out and then just continue to layer until you get the desired look that you want on the wing i really had a lot of fun creating this part and just shaping everything to get the look that i was going for and just kept working with it until the entire wing was completely covered and make sure you go all the way into the groove between the stair spindle and the wing to make sure it's all nice and covered in there now once that was all done I went ahead and moved on to the head I'm just drilling out a hole adding in one of these sticks one of the craft sticks from the Dollar Tree and then this ornament when I saw this I knew that this could be a head for an angel so I snagged it and how cool is it that it has the exact same scalloped texture as the wings I thought that this was meant to be together I was so thrilled over this so once I added a little hot glue I went ahead and twisted it onto the body of the angel and now I wanted to create some depth and some texture to this angel and her wings so I'm gonna go ahead and go in with a pretty gray color and I'm just going to work into all of those little crevices making sure everything is covered in the gray color and making sure that I just keep tapping as I go this is I think probably where it goes from just being a craft to a high-end looking item that you might see in an actual boutique and then I made sure I flipped it over got all the sides got the back and I'm going to also paint the bottom basis color but I'm going to come back in with some white paint and dry brush over the wings and the feathers and I'm gonna dry brush over the base as well. Make sure you have very little paint on your brush as you're doing this, this is the dry brush technique, and then just keep working with it until you get that desired look that you want. Now I wanted to be able to have my angel holding up a wreath in between her because, well, I like little tiny wreaths and why not? So I went ahead and took some of this garland, twisted it around into a smaller wreath, and then to make it look more high end, I'm gonna take some box wood and I'm gonna add that to the wreath. But once I had everything all twisted into place, I'm now going to take this. I picked these up from Hobby Lobby on a really long vine and I just cut it up until I get everything all used up and then I go and pick up another one with my coupon. Now I'm gonna add some berries and I'm just gonna really finish off this look by making sure I don't have any bald areas on it. I wanted to make sure it looks really covered and really beautiful. And then the last, add a bow to finish the look and hang it on your angel. We are going to be using these supplies and could you just die over those buttons they are so cute they had these at the dollar tree too all of these supplies except for the felt obviously because they don't sell felt there quite yet all came from the dollar tree so the coolest thing i figured out about these signs is that when you take off one of the ball ends they have these dowel sticks in their craft section that fit perfectly inside so i went ahead and snuck it in on one side with some hot glue took some pliers cut it down to size and then put some more hot glue to make the rod longer now i'm going to be able to turn this into a really darling advent calendar for valentine's day the size I'm going to be cutting with my felt is 17 by 25 inches just in case you were wondering what would fit on that bar and then I took a one and a half inch of this tan strip of felt and I'm just going to cut some scallops I'm free handing this I didn't do a perfect job on them not every scallop is perfect 
Then I'm going to go ahead and take some ribbon and cut that down to size because I want that to be where the rod is hanging on to the advent calendar. Now comes a really fun part. You're going to add on those scalps by putting a bead of glue all along the edge of that one white fabric. Now I forgot to mention that you're going to be cutting out two of those because you want to have a back and a front. So once you've got all of your scallop pieces all on and hot glued, you're then going to take that second piece of that 17 by 25 white felt and then you're going to just simply hot glue it all the way around and down into place. Make sure that you don't push too hard because the hot glue can bleed through on felt. I like to just lightly tap it. Now we're going to take some of their lace that they have in the floral section at the Dollar Tree and I love this stuff. I use it on so many projects. I just think it's so pretty. That's what the container looks like or the spool looks like that you can buy it with. Once I've gone all the way around the edge, I moved back up to the top where I'm going to now insert the bar in my little ribbon slips or little slats or whatever you would call that. And I'm so sorry, you guys, I did not have a wide zoom out on this because you can't see that I'm gluing back on the little balls on the end of the bar. So sorry about that, but I took off the twine and then I'm going to repurpose it to create little loops on the back side. Now you could keep it tied, but I just felt like it was kind of bowing the bar a little bit. So I decided to do these two little loops on the opposite ends of it. And this looks really great hanging up. Next, we're going to create a heart template with some wrapping paper. I've said this before. I love using wrapping paper because there's a grid line on the back. You're going to want your heart to be wide and chubby. <laughs> and that's because you're going to be turning these into little pockets. Now, here's a tip. If you are going to be using any pattern fabric, make sure you cut out enough to have a back and a front so that way it looks really finished plus it stiffens up the fabric a little bit more so it's the same thickness as the felt. The colors I went with were a soft pink, a taupey tan color, and that really cute buffalo check gray and white. Now when you're gluing down your hearts, remember to only glue down the sides and then go up a little bit on the side of the heart like I'm doing here, but don't glue the middle part because you're going to turn these into pockets in just a few minutes. So you can see here that I can put my hand inside of it and once you've got 14 hearts, there is enough space on this size to create 15. So the very last one, I took these darling little buttons and I created a little heart pattern down below. Now the next cool thing is, is the Dollar Tree has puffy paint now. I don't know if you all know this, but I was super excited. Puffy paint can be a love-hate relationship for some people. So here is how I do mine. I always have a little scrap piece of fabric to kind of feel out the consistency, the thickness of the bottle. And then I always tap it down really hard to try to get the air bubbles away from the nozzle when I'm working with it. You'll even see me as I'm shaking it. But be careful because sometimes when you shake it, sometimes depending on the company that makes them, paint can come out. So what I just did there was probably a bad example. But when you're doing your numbers or letters, take your time. Don't rush it. See how I was doing my five and I didn't feel that I was going the right direction. So I stopped and I went from the bottom back up and connected. I really just take my time and try to flow with the paint. And so you see here, I just did my, my O part of the nine or the circle part of the nine. And then I went and tapped it again to bring down the leg. And here it is the finished look. I hope you felt inspired by this video today. All of these top 20 have been from you all telling me which ones were your favorite throughout this year. Thank you everyone who has left a comment throughout 2020 and let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, so I can continue to provide inspiration that you actually enjoy. Thanks for stopping by today and until the next episode, bye friends.